My grandmother's parents and four of her siblings died in Auschwitz. My grandmother did not because my grandmother never actually was sent to Auschwitz. She made it to the United States before she was uh, sent there. I studied abroad my junior year of college in England. Uh, we had a one month spring break and I decided, as every American visiting student does, to go put on the backpack and backpack all around Europe. And I started by going to Dachau, which was not far from Munich. Dachau is, is historic, but honestly, it feels sanitized to me. Like, I couldn't really feel the gravity of everything that happened there, even though I knew things happened there. And so I decided, after visiting Dachau, that it was really important for me to rearrange my itinerary for the rest of this break and get to Auschwitz. And I got to Auschwitz, got off the train by myself. I looked up not too long after that, and it was the opening scene from Schindler's List. It was the tower. It was the main entrance to the camp. A chill kind of went up my spine when I realized that I was following the train tracks that brought my ancestors to their death. And so this immediately had a very different effect than Dachau on me. This felt very much like I could get a sense of, it was very solemn. I, I could feel that this was a death camp. As I got to a point in the afternoon where I thought I should probably start heading back, and that's when I came upon somebody. There was this woman with a purple coat standing there by herself. She was older and she was looking at the barrack building and she picked up a rock and she yelled something, not in English, and she threw it as hard as she could at the barrack, at the building. No English, but I knew what was going on. She was there. This woman was in that barrack when she was a prisoner in this camp. I knew it. And we started walking together, the two of us, where there were a lot of trees, off to, you know, sort of like a forest off to the back. And she started telling me a story. She was trying to explain to me what happened here and that people would run, you know, would go into the trees, into the forest. But then the guards had everyone lined up over in the square. And if people weren't there for roll call, they would start shooting people. And she was doing this with her gestures and lining up, and she was explaining it in the best way she could. And then as we kept walking, in different spots in Auschwitz, there's four stones, they look like tombstones, with an inscription in four different languages that say the same thing. And it tells the story of what happened at that spot. And I remember that there is a, I'm gonna call it a pool, but it's almost like a pond that's dark and it's dark because it still has ashes in it from so many years ago in the Holocaust. So mass graves, you know, a body of water that's always going to remain very dark colored. You, you can't really describe it almost. Then I was waiting for the train. I said goodbye to the lady in the purple coat. There was a, a young man there with a dog, with a German shepherd. And he said, are you American? And I said, yes. I said, oh, you speak English. He says, oh, I'm trying, I'm learning. And I said, are you from here? And he said, yes, I am from Oswegian. And then he said to me, my town will always only be known for one thing. The fact that someone who's from there was very aware you know, of what happened there and felt remorse about it. He really did. He felt remorse about it, even though it wasn't something that he did or had control over. To me, it was an indication as we move forward that if we continue to acknowledge that something happened and reflect upon it, that perhaps we build a better future. You know, I've had a number of opportunities over the years to make sure that I'm doing something to honor those not only who perished, but those who survived. I firmly believe that if we don't remember this, if we don't honor um, the Holocaust and have Yom HaShoah programs and throughout the year continue to educate people, that all those people who died in the Holocaust and all the survivors, all the family members, that, you know, it's a disservice to all of them and it would be horrible. That's what we need to be doing. We need to be educating people about the Holocaust. I have a, a special spot in my heart for anyone who has gone through this. Um, any survivor, in my mind, is a hero. And I will do anything I can to help any survivor, for sure. I think all of us can do something to help make sure that people remember that this happened 
then the importance of the Holocaust is not lost. And to combat all of the unfortunate um, anti-Semitism and hatred that unfortunately still exists in our world this many years later. <laughs>